Hello everyone, welcome to your last section for your Matplotlib chapter. In this one, we are going to take all the learning that we've done in our previous sections and put it all together to create a, kind of a real looking line graph that, that kind of looks legitimate and uh, you know should take all the skills that you've learned and put them all together, okay? So uh, in, this ex in this section, we are going to build a graph from real data uh, we are going to use multiple style features in order to adjust it to make it look pretty. And then we're going to do a handful of useful statistical tricks in order to like add a little bit more nuance to what this plot is showing us. We are going to use some real data and you know make it make it look all nice and fancy. In terms of definitions or things you need to know, we are going to use one thing called a list comprehension. Uh, in Python in order to do in order to create the plot that we're going to create this is basically like a one line for loop if you've never encountered this because you haven't taken one of my classes or you know just something you haven't been exposed to before I'll spend a little bit of time explaining how this all works and then we're also going to add a regression equation to our line graph and we're going to use that using um, scipy which is something that we'll spend more time with in the end of our uh, classes. It's our second last chapter, but I'll introduce you to it very quickly because we want to produce some sort of uh, some sort of regression equation for our graph. So this is the kind of plot that we're going to be making. I took this data from a Kaggle data set, which is a repository of uh, data sets that are available to play with and use. And um, it was looking at like bakery purchases across days, like how many purchases were made at a bakery, okay? And we have these, we have this line graph that's going to be, um, we're gonna create this, you know, these nice black lines with these grids. And then we're also going to calculate this uh, red dashed line, which is our regression equation here, uh, suggesting like kind of where the middle is going and kind of what trends are occurring, okay? And we're gonna do that using SciPy a little bit. So um, better than just talking about it, why don't we just jump into the code and get this all running and see how it all works. Sound good? Okay, everyone. First off, in order to build this, uh, this visualization in the first place, where did I get my data? I got it from this transactions from a bakery data set. So it's like a bunch of observations of you know, uh, time of day and how many times, like uh, what people bought and how much of it did they buy? And, you know, did they buy some hot chocolate? Did they buy some coffee and all that kind of stuff. So my graph is a very simple, just looking at the like amount of transactions in a given day, okay? So in order to do that first, I don't think we need stats here so we can remove stats. But first thing is we imported pandas and matplotlib, very important for a visualization pro section. Next thing I did was I downloaded that data set. And so I loaded in the data set using dot read CSV. Uh, if I just comment this all out, we can look at what the data set looks like now. So we saw it before, but we have date time, what transaction it is, and then, you know, the items, okay? So what I did was I grouped all of the transactions by date and then I took a count okay and what that does is it gives me like how many purchases were conducted um, at this at this time or at this very at this uh, at this particular date and like it's consistent across time transaction and item count because you know it's just counting the amount of rows that were that were in each so I'm just really looking at like count of transactions in a given day okay then what I did was I created an X variable, which is just going to be the, you know, the a range of dates. It's just going to be the range of the events that occurred in, in this data frame. So it's going to be 180, no, about 160 days worth of data. I then did a, embed, a list comprehension. So we talked about list comprehensions previously. Uh, I created an empty list here. And then what I did was, this is how you conduct a one uh, a for loop in one line. If you just wrap something in a list, like this, and you, oh, this is dot append, that's what's going on. And you go for your, and you, you run your for logic, everything that happens to the left of it is going to run. So this is basically creating a, this is, so for every element in our transaction, data frame, which is 
uh, you know, we're going to add some information to it, basically like how many total transactions there were for that, for that given day, okay? The next thing I did was I wanted to create the red dotted line you see you saw previously. So in order to do that, I needed to create an equation. So we actually do need NumPy here. So import NumPy as MP. And I wanted just like a really simple, um, not a linear regression line, but a curved regression line that's showing some dip. So rather than, so what I did was this this np.polyfit is going to create a function. It's going to take in some data and try and find like what the mx plus b is for it. So I pass in our x data our, and my y data, and I say I want it to be parabolic, meaning if it was one, it would be just a linear straight line. If it's two, it's got that kind of curve to it, three, four, and so on and so on, okay? Uh, once we have that, I can, once we have that, I can then create the function by saying, okay, num, numpy, I want to use this dot poly one dimensional function and pass in this fit parameter, this, this fit object. And this will give me a function that I can then uh, pass in X values to and get predicted results. Then I just plot everything. So first thing I do is I plot our X and Y values. Uh, I, I plot both things here. So it turns out with dot plot, you can plot multiple things at the same time. So this is first our X, Y, um, and our black line. So this is our data. Then I pass in X, our function that was created from like the regression line. I pass in the function with X data, and that will give me the Y for that, as well as I wanted it as dashed red lines. Then I said I wanted our parameters to just have nicer binning, so it's easier to read. It's not just like 160 different ticks. I've set the grids so it's pretty as well, and you know a couple other styling features, and that's what ends up producing this. So if I got rid of this locator params, what would happen? Nothing too much, so we can probably remove that. But let's just see if it's there. Yeah, see, it kind of reduced some of the tightening. So we had 20 bins uh, prior, and that gave us like eight or nine. So you can adjust the amount of bins using that. And then I've adjusted the X and Y axes. I added some gridding. Okay. So uh, with that, guys, that's basically all we wanted. We took some real data and we added two plots to to on top of each other. Well, like three almost because we have this black line that we, well, two plots. We, have, we plotted the black line and then we plotted the red line by creating that function. Okay. That's all we really needed to do in order to visualize real data in a meaningful way. Okay. So let's do a recap of what we just learned. So what did we learn today, guys? We learned how to take in real data from a like a Kaggle data set. We did a little bit of processing. So I took that information, found some stuff that I wanted, did an aggregation function uh, to it so I could see the amount of transactions per day, so on and so forth, and then um, plotted two lines, which one was a regression line and the other one was the actual data itself. We played a little bit with the styling and, uh, and to make the, 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 the image look proper and complete, it looked professional, so that we can then you know show it to someone. Maybe we add a title or something like that. But basically, that's all we need to do in order to uh, you know take in some data from a from a data set that has all great information on it, and then you know analyze it and produce some sort of meaningful visualization from it. You could see in that image that there was like, appeared to be some cyclical patterns going on. So that was kind of neat. Some days are better than others. Um, so with that guys, um, congratulations on finishing this chapter and I'll see you in the next one. We're gonna spend a lot of time looking at scikit-learn, which is a data science package in Python. It's extremely useful. We're gonna spend extra time on this because there's two big sections of scikit-learn that I want to show you that you know has a lot of very useful functions for Python. So um, thank you very much guys and we'll see you next time.